to actually do anything about this. I don't read anything from anybody doing, you know, I don't know if the, the Green Party or the, the basically the council and the Lewisham like yourself or whatever have raised it, but, uh, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I must admit it's sort of gone off my radar a bit, but I remember sort of four or five years ago being at conferences where one of the speakers was talking all about, um, I think, what was it? The, it was outrageous, the, the amount of um, energy wasted in buildings, and it was something like 50% or more of our energy being wasted. So if we were thinking about changing our energy supply and how we provide it, uh, if we stop wasting it, we only have to provide half of that so that the renewable challenge is less. Although I must admit that some of our colleagues and friends of the earth uh, at our own climate um, conference, the Trade Union one recently, uh, uh, didn't seem to, to, to think that that was, that was a go of us, um, putting so much faith in um, energy efficiency. Because uh, once that's saved, then you know they think people would want to uh, to use energy for other things and stuff. But um, I, I still think that that's a good, clear argument to put forward. But yes, I do re remember um, there was an excellent speaker at a conference, and he was saying to like uh, buildings would like have these big stickers like you have on the side of your fridge, and but also homes were supposed to have it have them and. Um, depending on how well insulated and looked after that they were going to... Well, we know all over that sort of um, uh, certi home certificate sort of system sort of fell apart and then was half retrieved and there's a bit of a dog's dinner at the moment but when you're selling your home and only if it's uh, over a certain um, value then do you have to have these certificates um, through and they're not perhaps as rigorous as they should be. But no, it's gone off my radar, so I don't mind. You can give me um, any more modern, up-to-date info that you've got, and I could definitely put in a challenge straight to the Cabinet down in Lewisham and um, see what their initial response is. If it's bad, then we'll put a motion to the Council and persuade um, the, the whole House and parties to, uh, to rally behind that and get something done because um, we are putting pressures on energy efficiencies. We're going to uh, uh, be putting something in about um, having like a, a peak oil plan. Um, you know, our mayor actually mentioned that word once in, in, a, in a talk recently, so that right now we've got you. So that's a start for the borough. Um, but no, it's very interesting. I don't know about council buildings personally, you know, I don't know about civil service buildings. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it all comes into the same thing. To probably, be you've probably got the same certificates everybody else has got. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, no, I can find out, see, and then yeah, that would be a good idea. Don't mention Green Party headquarters. <laughs> no, we are moving. Them. I know we're moving. We're moving. We're one of the worst, worst wasteful high buildings high in London. Yeah. At the moment. Um, yeah, I was just thinking how we bring some of this, create these creative ideas together in some practical form. Obviously investors' solidarity is, is part of it, but mm -hmm. and obviously the initiative with big trade union people, uh, which will eventually issue forth some pronouncement in December, is something else. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to think with our very small forces about um, the seeds that we sow of larger forms of organising, like um, having, well, a local uh, green jobs forums or campaigns in each borough with, you know, exchanging ideas about specific plans. You know, well, this has shut down, so why don't we convert it to this? Um, the, the job centre uh, or the government buildings need refurbishing, so why don't we do that? And have a kind of local jobs plans or something towards that, involving lots of people in the process, uh, which is campaigning and educational. This is a huge task in a way, but. We already have the seeds of it in a few in the Vestas campaigns, solidarity groups. Um, and the Lucas Aerospace plan is it it shows what could be done in different workplaces and different communities. And perhaps this is where the, the trade union campaign against climate change group could be going. And the, what we as the Green Left and SR and Permanent Revolution and whoever else could be campaigning for inside the bigger parties that they've got on. Yeah, my thought on that is that um, going straight in with a whole lot initially might be too much and you may not have the right expertise, but going in perhaps with um, 
more local public discussions open like this one here, where a few people who've got um, their um, detailed stories of things that are going on or problems in industries historically or currently um, or anticipating the changes that might be happening, say, in your industry, um, that we can have those discussions and then open it up and allow people to ask questions or add their opinions in and then from that perhaps say, shall we look at our local area? When they're already then on stage one would be perhaps informed and, um, and then leave the agitation to step three. And so. um, in Birmingham, um, we've been trying to, well, obviously the city fathers have got great plans about making it a green city. You know? Every big city must have it somewhere locked away. Probably brings it out when it needs to win an election, it needs to win a constituency, constituency doesn't it? So um, that's okay. <coughs> but I mean, Birmingham Council is pretty moribund at the moment. So, so while well, we've, we've, we've taken notice of that, we've, we've sort of green lines to left and um, based around the campaign against climate change, and um, we've got. Um, Friends of the Earth have got an office and we sort of share that facility. Sometimes we've intervened in that. I mean, obviously, from my point of view, what we've tried to do, which is a lot, lot more difficult, is to try and um, <clears throat> raise the issue in the trade amongst trade unionists. Like we pro projected um, uh, a conference of trade union uh, reps based around the camp, trades council, the trades council, about last year, since last year, we've been trying to struggle and get this thing pinned down with dates and enough people to, you know, make it viable. So I think we've been pursuing that, but um, I do think that one of the things you can do is to, is, you know, when, when we come back to my starting point, is when they do announce, um, you know, um, the proposals in the city, just go along and put them on the spot, you know, and put your perspective view in, and that creates feedback, that creates something in the local newspaper, so it's helped build a little bit about that profile, you know. I know there's small issues, but um, you know, you can't get around the fact that the local state is, you know, is mandated by Europe or by whatever to um, to do, you know, the cut, cut power consumption or make, you know, upgrade insulation, things like that. Um, and Theresa, last question. Um, yeah, I, I think on a really, really basic level, one of the practical things we should maybe be doing, kind of following on from something Duncan said, is having public meetings talking to people about why they're opposed to wind turbines in their local area, and just dis dispelling the myths around them. And because um, you know, a lot of people do do it for reasons like, oh, all the birds will die, you know, or think that Stonehenge is going to be covered in wind turbines if you let the you know, people believe this kind of stuff and you need to get be getting out there and talking to people about that stuff and then maybe leading on to and what is your local council, what is your local councillor doing. Um, the other thing that I was going to talk, um, I, I think that kind of thinking in terms of like local jobs that have been lost and how can you make them kind of transitional jobs is a really good idea. I really, really hope that that campaign against climate change report is kind of out around Copenhagen because I think what you, what, Vestas is a really easy struggle and I think what we can use it to talk to people about is, and this is why you need something like this and hopefully it will be all costed because actually if you leave it to the major parties you're going to end up with situations as ridiculous as this. Um, um, I certainly think, you know, in terms of the Vestas solidarity groups, that kind of looking more locally, broadening it out beyond Vestas is something that they're keen to do. So hopefully in the future they'll be looking into that. Yeah. Um, the main point I've tried to make this morning in the workshop was that um, we, we will not be able to stop climate change through good intellectual arguments. Uh, we must 